Hey podcast listeners, welcome to What You're Reading, the podcast where I connect with fellow book enthusiasts to chat about our latest reads, the topics that fuel our bookish obsession, and all those things that keep us glued to those pages. Welcome back everyone for another episode. Today we're talking about reading books that you enjoy and how to find them. I'm sitting down with fellow bookstagrammer Kina to talk about what it looks like to figure out your reading taste. I've had quite a few conversations over these last couple of months of people who are just generally curious as to how I figured out specific book themes that tend to work for me. I saw Kina talking about this on Instagram not too long ago, and so I invited her into the guest chair to talk about what that process kind of looks like. Spoiler alert, it's a lot of trial and error. So we get into what has worked for us when it comes to reading and figuring out our taste, what hasn't, and of course, we're giving you tons of book recs. So let's get into it. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of What You're Reading. Today, guys, we are going to have a discussion about finding books that you love and really learning and honing in on your unique reading style. So I've got a great guest that I'm going to introduce you here to in a second. Um, We met on Instagram. I want to say we've probably been Instagram friends for maybe like the last year or so. Um, And I've noticed like we have a lot of similar reading tastes and have just chatted back and forth, whether actually on the grid or through DMs. And so I just reached out to you and I'm so glad that you accepted um, to come on because I think you had a story posted where you were talking about how you learned your reading taste and you're not reading anything that just doesn't sound interesting to you. And I loved that conversation that you were having on your stories. And so I just wanted to invite you on to kind of talk to the people about that. And and I think this is something people really struggle with is forcing themselves to read like the popular books, the Oprah book club, the Reese, the, all of the things because everyone else is loving them. And even if they're not, they think like maybe something's wrong with them. So without further ado, I would love to introduce you guys to Kina. We'll talk a little bit about where you can find her Instagram and everything um, throughout the episode. But say hello to everyone and please introduce yourself. Well, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Kina and I um, have a bookstagram. It's um, called Lit and Listen. And I started it back in May of 2023. And I basically started it because I was talking to a friend of mine and she was starting one herself. And I was like, that sounds so cool. And I was like, I never thought about that. And I had just recently got back into reading. I go back and forth with reading, with life, you know, it'd be life. And so I go back and forth. So I started it and, you know, I, th- I thought like nobody's going to listen to me or care about what books I'm reading or my recommendations or anything like that. But I grew so much in my reading that I just really enjoyed it. So that's where I started with Bookstagram. I am a mom of two. I have a 21 year old and a 15 year old, both boys, and I've been married for 15 years. Mm -hmm. I also work in the digital marketing space. So I'm a black woman in tech. So. Oh, nice. I love that. How long have you been in digital marketing? I have to be honest. So let's, let's start way back. Me and my husband bought a coffee shop back in 2009. It's something that he wanted to do. I wanted nothing to do with it, (laughs) but I wasn't working at the time. So I was like, you know, this is your dream. This is your goal. Something you want to do. I'm all for it. So I started then, I started with social media marketing, doing it all myself to where I started my own very small agency of one, me, um, doing social media marketing. And then I transformed over to SEO, um, to search engine optimization. So right now I'm a strategist for an agency. So it's been about, it's 2000, about 14 years. Okay, awesome. I asked his entrepreneurial brain, I'm an event planner. It's great. It's being your own boss is its own (laughs) yes it's its own thing you have no one to blame but you um so it's definitely different um but I just I love you know hearing entrepreneurial journeys and and just business journeys and the ways you know you do something for a minute and it works for the time being and then you know you evolve and grow and into something else so I love hearing those types of stories. So let's give the listeners a little bit more information about like your reading style. If you want to share maybe the last one to two books that you've read, they can be books that you enjoyed or just in general. 
So I just finished two books and I enjoyed both of them. One was a five star read, one was a four. Um, I started off, so I'll start with this. I read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez Mm -hmm. before the year was over. And I read it in maybe 24 hours. Um, So I didn't know that there was one prior. Ah. So I went back. So I just read Part of Your World by her. Amazing book, five stars. And then I just finished yesterday. I just finished um, Perfect Little Lives by Amber and Danielle Brown. They're two identical, gorgeous black twins who wrote a little sexy thriller. So it was really good. They have a book prior to that too that I need to read. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think I saw you post about that, but I didn't know. So it's two twins writing a book together. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. And they have another one. I need to get to that one. I haven't read it yet, but this one was really good. It was different, but I really enjoyed it. Okay. Okay. I love that. I have a hard time with the typical thrillers that are put out there. One, for the most part, because I'm not thrilled. Like I end up being (laughs) bored in them and I'm like, this is doing nothing for me. So I have a hard time going into thrillers other than YA thrillers. For whatever reason, YA thrillers tend to, to do it for me. So good. Um, I don't know what it is. They are so good. So I'm gonna have to add that one to my list. And I'm really intrigued that it's that it's not only two authors but two twins. Um, so I'm yes. really intrigued to see their writing style on that one. Two identical twins that's, too. So that's crazy. That's, yeah. Oh, that's so great. I love it. Okay. And so I know you said you just finished that one yesterday. What are you either currently picking up or plan to pick up over the weekend? So. Um, Lauren Lacey always, I'm part of her little team and she always sends books. And um, I'm now reading The Family She Found by Lauren Lacey. It's um, it's like a novella. It's short, but it's like last night I didn't want to put it down, but I didn't feel well. Mm. So I had to put it down so I get some rest, but it's really good. It's it's a romance story. It's, it's very spicy. Okay. Okay. I've never read anything from that author. So Again, I'll definitely have to um, to check it out. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing those. We're going to move right on in to the meat of our discussion. Can you tell us a little bit more about like your overall style of books that you not only love to read, but the books that you love to share on your account? So as a Black woman, I love reading books by Black women. So I will share those to the end of time. So that's where I start off with. That's And of course, those are not the only books that I read, but those are the books I enjoy because a lot of times I can see myself in those books. I know the the lingo and things like that. So it's easier for me to relate. So I do read those, but I read a ton of books. I'll, I'll tell you how I started back reading. This was back in, I guess, maybe March of last year. I was just looking online and I saw everybody posting all these Colleen Hoover books. And I was like, who is this? I was like, I don't know who this is. And I was like, okay, well, so let me go grab a a Colleen Hoover book. So I started off with Verity. I was going to ask you which one. Okay. That's the only one I've ever read. I don't need to read anymore, but okay. Do not. (laughs) Um, So that one, I started off with that one and that one just like jump started me in reading because I thought it was amazing. I thought it was great. Yeah. Then I was like, well, let me get all these other books. And if I could turn my computer around, I have all of them (laughs) because I just thought things were going to change. But I will say that, you know, just getting into reading like that, I wasn't a huge romance reader at that time. So reading Verity was good because it was like a thriller. Mm -hmm. So when I got into the romance stuff, it was kind of like, okay, okay. But then I kept reading and I kept reading and I kept reading. So that opened up a lot of books to me just just to read. So that's when I got started with the bookstagram and then seeing what other people are reading and things like that. So I'm I'm a thriller girl. You know, it 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 bothers me that sometimes, well actually most of the time I can figure out who done it before it's over. Really? I'm so bad but, at that. So like I said with Perfect Little Lives, I figured it out, but then I questioned myself. Mm. So that's why I thought that was good. But I am a thriller girly. I do love romance now, too. I'm, I'm getting more into the romance books. So my reading style is usually, you know, we'll talk about this later, but, you know, reading what I want to read. Mm-hmm. Yeah, reading what, what feels good. Now, just really quick, on the subject of Colleen Hoover and Verity, and I know they're, you know, we all have our own thoughts and, and opinions. But the one thing that that I will say is I think for people who are getting back into reading, because um, I've had a few friends who that was their entry to, and they were like, 
I haven't read a book in a year and I read this within 48 hours. Like, yes. am I a reader? Like it just made them feel <laughs> so good to read, you know, to be able to get into it. And I think it's like one of those, it's not overly complicated. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, it was really short, like 10 to 15 minute chapters to where you could just say, yep. okay, one more. Um, so I think there's something there when people are looking to get back into reading, not saying they have to read that one, but a book right. similar, right. To something like that, where right. you've got short chapters, you've got a, a, a plot that's just continually moving forward. I think everything in that book happened within a matter of, I don't know, two, three weeks. Like, oh, yes, very short. Yeah, It was really short. So I think there are some, there are some like nuggets in there that we can take mm -hmm. out to find books like that style yeah. that would help people really get back into their reading habit. Yes. And that's good to hear that a lot of people started off kind of with, oh, who is this that everybody's reading? And you get back into it and you don't, you venture out. You don't just stick with Colleen Hoover. Right. You don't just stick with her style of books, but you move into other things. And that's, I look around my office right now where there's like, hundreds of books that I haven't even opened yet. So. <laughs> right. Oh, I got a bunch of them over here too. So have you always had a strong sense, or at least for the last year, now that you're, you know, back into reading, have you always had a mm -hmm. strong sense of the type of books that you like, or do you feel like you've been able to kind of hone in on that more within this, this last year? So this past year, I figured like, you know, when I started reading, I was just reading whatever everyone else was reading. Um, trying to read, you know, ooh, this was on Book Talk. Let me read this. It must be good. Things like that. To where I finally found what I enjoyed reading, which, you know, I've spent my whole life, I've read mystery books and thriller books like that. So getting into books that, you know, I can either like see myself in it or I've been through similar situations or just something that I can laugh at or you know, maybe even cry it, which is very rare, but it has happened. You know, I, I found what I like to read, but I started off reading, honestly, what everyone else was reading. Yeah. And I, and I think we tend to, you know, gravitate towards that, especially when there's so many people that loved it. Yeah. Like you're like the odds of me liking it are, are, should be pretty, should be pretty high. And, you know, sometimes I wonder, and, and I don't know if you've ever thought about this, like, are people liking these books because everyone else is liking them or are they re did they really think this was a good book or are they just talking about this because it's the popular book to talk about now and it'll get them followers like sometimes I look at it and and I just wonder like do you really like this like I just because I've been there I've yeah. been there like when you first start your bookstagram you want followers so yeah. you're reading the popular books you're giving them all the accolades. Oh, this book was amazing. And then in the back of your mind, was it? Was it amazing? Or are you just saying that? And I can say, honestly, in the beginning, there were times where I just said it. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, everyone else likes it. So in order for people to listen to me or follow me or be interested in anything that I'm talking about, I have to agree with the masses. And that really isn't the way of reading. And I figured that out lately so right no yeah. I totally understand and I think um it's interesting that you say that because I was reading what did I read over the summer I read an Emily Henry book over the summer and I've read all of her romance books and after that one I was just like you know I don't know that Emily Henry's for me like <laughs> and after I, that one <laughs> yeah it, it was like I've read them all and I was just kind of like None of these feel like romance, especially because I had started reading, you know, Kennedy Ryan. And I was like, oh. I don't feel this way about Emily Henry. Um, it feels very woman fiction with a sprinkle of romance in there, with, with an exception of people we meet on vacation. And I think that's probably my favorite one. But it got me wondering, like, I kept seeing all of these reviews of people who are like, oh, my God, this, you know, happy people made me sob. And I'm like, did it? Did I, what what's wrong with me? Because <laughs> it didn't make me sob. No, they're collecting dust. I haven't read it yet. I need to. But, oh, I'm but sorry. Maybe not. I don't want to ruin it for you. No, you're fine. That's good to know. I like to know these things. So yeah. it, it took me a while to figure out that she wasn't for you. And I think it's, you know, they're, they're great. 
it's going to be an audio listen for me for whichever one I think funny, funny story or whatever she has coming up this year. Um, it's just going to be an audio listen from the library and they're great, you know, popcorny, you know, simple ones. Yeah. But knowing now that I like romance that feel a little bit deeper, that have a little bit more spice that yeah. have, you know, a little bit more connection between the people. Yes. And I like to see the romance happen. And I yes. feel like in a lot of her books, not a lot. It, at least in Happy People, it felt like there was a lot of telling, like there was a lot of flashbacks and she was telling what happened, but we didn't necessarily get to see everything that happened. Ah, okay. Um, so just just one of my thoughts as, as I'm watching all of these people cry over Happy People and I'm like, or maybe there's just something wrong with me. <laughs> like, did I miss something? So how do you figure out which books you don't like? Like, is there a moment in reading is there just a trope or a theme that you just know like I don't like this in tv shows or in in movies so I'm not gonna like this in a book like how do you kind of hone in on what you don't like so it takes a minute it takes me a minute like I'll give I'll give everything a chance except for I gave dark romance a chance I'm not doing that again so um can I ask it just was, one um I cannot think carved in scars. It was, it was, it was too much for me. Okay. Like anybody else, I'm sure they're, they can enjoy, but it was a lot mm -hmm. and I'm not prepared for a lot. I'm yeah. prepared. I'm prepared for fun and love and happiness and some, some, maybe somebody dies, but still this was too much. Okay. But, um, for me, like if I start reading, I'll give most books a chance. So I'll start reading. And then when I get to like page 60 and it's taken me four days to get to page mm. 60, I'm not, this isn't for me. And there would be times prior to this, prior to, I'll say, towards the end of the year where I would just, I got to read it. I got to push through because it's an arc or because it's mm. something that everyone else likes to read. And it's like, I don't want to waste my time mm -hmm. when I could get into another book that I'm going to thoroughly enjoy. I'm not going to waste my time reading something that is just not for me. And I think people have to understand that everything is not for everybody and that's okay. Don't force yourself to push through a book that you're you're not seeing any type of connection with. So it took me a while to figure that out because I would just push through a, maybe two weeks. And I'm like, okay, I'm finally done. But how do I feel after reading mm -hmm. it? I felt like this was an assignment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as an adult, I don't go to school. So I don't really want an assignment. Like, I have to do this. I have to do this. It's, it's, it's reading to me is something that I want to do. It's not a chore. It's something that I enjoy. It's a passion. So to sit there and push through a book that is like, meh, no, I don't think so anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, that you, you know, you notice within a page limit that it, it might not be working for you. I try and give, you know, maybe two or so hours on the audio and, you know, maybe a hundred pages in a book to see, but I, I feel so guilty, especially with an arc. And I love that you said yes. that. And for listeners who are wondering, an arc is an advanced reader copy um, of a book that hasn't come out yet. Sometimes we get these books, whether through NetGalley or, um, you know, the publisher relationship and they send it for an honest review. And there are some arcs where I'm like, I just have to push through because like, I, I'm grateful to have this opportunity right. and I don't want to tell them like, yeah, man, I couldn't finish, <laughs> couldn't finish. How do you, how do you navigate that? Like, you know, that either telling the publisher or just saying like, like someone spent a lot of time on this and I appreciate it, but this isn't for me. Yeah. And when I first, when I first started getting arcs, I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Look at me. I'm, I'm getting these. So I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through and I'm being a hundred percent nice. I'm lying sometimes mm -hmm. on how good this book honestly was, but now it's to the point where I've had to slow down on the arcs because it, it's just overwhelming. So now I want to be honest because I feel like they're sending you these books for your honest opinion. They don't want the fluff. They want to know, did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Or should there be improvement? So I'm actually honest now. I'm very honest. Like if it's like a below a three star, I'm going to be honest and I'm going to let them know. It's not something that I'm going to post anywhere or anything mm -hmm. like that. But I feel like if you're if they're sending you these books, they're not sending you these books for you to lie. Mm -hmm. They're not sending you these books for you to be like, OK, I'm not going to read it. They want to know your honest thoughts. So it took a while because, you know, when you're starting off and you're like, ah, oh, I feel so 
excited to get these books that nobody's read that you're just like, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be honest, but they're asking for you to be honest. So I, I tell people now, look, if you get one, be honest because it's what they want to know. You don't have to plaster it around any type of site or your Instagram or mm-hmm. TikTok or anything like that. Just let them know like in an email or something, just be real. You got to right. be authentic. Right. Right. No, I definitely appreciate. And I'm sure they appreciate that authenticity. So do you, do you post any negative reviews? Like if you, even yeah. if it's not an arc, like a book that you've read, like I'll go back to my happy people example. It was a three star. And for me, a three star is fine. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't fantastic. It was just, it was okay. And so I stopped posting my star rating and I just kind of mm-hmm. leave it, you know, but I give my thoughts. And, and in that review, I said, you know, is this the best book I've ever read? No. Was it fun in the time? Sure. And just kind of leave it like that. So are you posting some of those negative reviews on things that you read? How do you navigate that? Yes. If it's not an arc, yes. If it's a book that's been out or anything that I, that I pick up, yes. For a while, no. But now I have because I've been honest because I've seen people post books and it's like, oh, this book was amazing. And then I read it and I'm like, no, it was not. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, do you be honest? Like maybe they did think it was amazing. I'm not going to say that they're lying, but there's sometimes where people look at your page or look at things that you post for recommendations. Mm-hmm. So if I sit there and I, and I sit up there and I said, this book was just five star. I, I, I want to reread it again. And I'm lying. I don't feel that I'm being authentic. So therefore it's like, If I read a book that's not good, I'm going to tell you that to me, it was not good. I'm going to be honest. Now, you can take from that that, hey, maybe she just didn't like it. It wasn't for her. I can try it out myself. Or you can be like, well, she said it wasn't good, so I'm not reading it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and there's sometimes when people post um, negative reviews and I'm like, I don't don't think I want to try that. Mm -hmm. So it, it saves me time and energy on reading something that I may get to page 10 and be like, oh, no, this is not it. Right. So it's like, be honest, be honest with your followers and, and your friends on, on things that you don't like. I mean, we can all talk about the things that we love and all oh, this is great. This is great. But be honest with the things you don't like. I don't really trust a reviewer, whether it's a movie reviewer or a book reviewer or, or just any type of influencer that everything's great because hmm. that's not true. Yeah. Yeah. I follow some of those. And and while I respect, you know, their decision, I've been trying to learn how to share honest opinion. And even if I didn't like it, suggest like you might like this if A, B and C, try it out. But I do appreciate honest reviews because then I might still read it, but now maybe I'm getting it from the library instead of, you know, trying to order the special edition because it's beautiful and I'm hoping I'll like it. You brought up the library and I'm going to say something about the library. Last year when I first started, I'm buying all of these books. These books, I'm just keeping them all. Like I said, I look around, there's, there's a hundred in here that I know I have not opened. (laughs) So towards the end of last year, I'm, I made a, a vow to myself to start utilizing my local library. And I, I was like, I don't, I can't take pictures for Bookstagram with a library book. That's how I was in the beginning. And now I live at that library, honey. And I feel like if I love the book, then I add it to my collection. I don't have to. And I think a lot of people that start off with Bookstagram because I was one feel like you have to go purchase all of these books and you don't have to do that. Utilize your local library. See if you really love it. Audio books. See if you like, I really want to have this book in my collection. You know, people don't care where you get the books from. They just want to know if you enjoy them. So I'm glad you brought the library because I feel like I'm there all the time. I come home, my husband like, you got another bag of books? Yes, I do. Yes. No, I completely agree. I did that quarter one of last year because I was trying to rein it, rein it in um, <laughs> with all my spending. And I needed to get back to that at the end of last year. My sister was here for the holidays. And she counted, I had like a book stack over here and I have my TBR cart and I have two book stacks on opposite sides of my TV where my dresser (laughs) is. And she was like, I wonder how many books this is. And it was like 73. And she was like, Jay, you have 73 books in here that you have not read yet. And I was like, point taken, point taken. I need to get back to 
to the and honestly some of them like some of them are I've put on my pango site because I no longer have an interest in reading them I, I was influenced mm -hmm. by you know someone who was like oh this is great and I read page one and I'm just like oh, do I don't care about this story <laughs> I don't think so I don't think so so yes, reading from the library, the ebook, the audio book, the physical book from the library. And then if I like it now, and maybe now I can find it on Pango and I can yeah. get it, you know, from another book lover for a lot cheaper than I would get it, you know, in the actual store. Are there genres or tropes that you tend to avoid because you know they just don't work for you other than dark romance? Oh, dark romance. That was... <laughs> That was a little rough for me, but yeah, that's, that's the, that's the main one. Like the book was written. I'll, I'll talk about that. The book was written very well. Mm -hmm. It just was not for me. I just, I couldn't do it. Um, I, I, I thought I didn't like age gap until I read part of your world mm -hmm. and it was an age gap. So I, I, I may give it another chance, but really anything I can really read. I have no issues with anything. What's made some books like a miss for you then? Like a as you're putting things down, what makes them? Is it the characters that you just don't care about? Is it the plot, the writing style? Like what usually makes something where you're like, eh, I don't know about this one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's all of those things. Mm. Um, it's the characters. If I don't feel like, oh, this character is interesting or it's, the character's going to grow within the book, I'm just like, no, thanks if it takes too long to get mm. to the beginning of a point, it's like this, I, I don't have time. And then also if I feel like the plot is either something that maybe I have read before and it wasn't good mm. or a plot that I kind of maybe don't even understand, maybe it's just not for me. Then for me, it's like, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. I don't, I'm not gonna waste any more time on it because like like you, I have hundred books that I can be reading that may be better than this one. So that's how I usually get. But the main thing is if it's taking too long to get somewhere, I, I can't. Okay, okay, that makes sense. What makes you push through other than like arcs where you're trying to see what makes you like if you're feeling kind of oh, I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna keep going. Is it because it's a big sensation online or you like the author? Like what kind of makes you push through instead of DNFing? Yeah. Um, one thing would be because a lot of people like it. Mm -hmm. They said it was good. Maybe I'm just not getting to that point yet to where it starts getting good. Another thing, it may be the author. Anything by a black author, I'm going to give it a shot, mm -hmm. you know, so I'll try to push through, but if it gets to a point to where it's like, look, I do not relate. So I, I close those, but yeah, it usually has to do with, you know, everybody else says they really like this book. What am I missing? Maybe I'm just not there yet. So I'll keep mm -hmm. pushing. Now I may not push all the way through. I may get to a point like, you know, well, this really is not for me and that's it. Or black author get to the point. It's not for me shut it down so yeah that's usually where I either try to push through all the way or at least push halfway through before I make a decision I feel like with romance that's probably really kind of easy to do you're usually meeting the love interest in the beginning and you know the story's kind of progressing and probably with thriller too like you're kind of you know you're meeting all the suspects and it's going on um, I have a hard time doing that with fantasy I don't know if you read um, a lot of fantasy especially because some of the fantasies are, you know, five, 600 pages. So it's like, yes. 100 pages isn't going to give me much info <laughs> that I need. I so, did read fantasy this year, last year though. Um, because I, that's another thing. I'm not a fantasy girly. So mm -hmm. it was uh, by a black woman, black author. Um, it was sign of the slayer by I think Sh Sharina Harris. Yes. I think it was Sharina Harris. Love that book. It was amazing. It was a black author with black characters. It was, I loved it. Okay. I don't think I've heard of that one. So I'll have to, I'll definitely have to look it up. I, I think fantasy can be difficult to get into something that has helped at least me with some of the higher fantasy ones. Like right now I'm reading um, NK Jemison's The Fifth Season. 
I've heard nothing but great things. I believe it won. I don't have it next to me. I believe it won a Hugo Award. Like this is, you know, an N.K. Jemisin Black author making moves in the sci-fi field. And this is like one of those books, like, you know, for for fantasy and sci-fi people like Brandon Sanderson, you know, um, a white male author is like really big, kind of like how... um, Mm -hmm. Uh, James Patterson is kind of big on on the thriller side. She's like her books are up there. Like diehard sci fi people who love J- um, who love Brandon Sanderson love N K Jemisin. So I had a really hard time though. And what helped was listening to the audio at the same time. So I'm currently now listening to the audio while I'm physically reading it, and it has made a world of difference, especially because of the way that it's, you know, the way that it's being read. Um, Even when there aren't commas, there are pauses and emphasis on things that I wouldn't have read it that way, which give the book a different meaning. So I like to tell people for fantasy like that might, and sci-fi, that that might be something helpful if there is a book that you're really trying to get into to see if it's any good. Um, But it's, it's, it's definitely taking some time. She kind of writes similar to Toni Morrison in the sense Mm. of like, there's some like hidden meanings and some, you know, some things where it's like, you kind of just got to keep reading. And at one point it's all going to make sense. Well, I'll have to try that with fantasy books. That's a great little idea. I'm going to try that. It's definitely been helpful. So with your, with your thriller, because it sounds like thriller is like your key. Yeah. That, that's your baby. And I think I saw, um, I think I see that Agatha Christie's. Um, yes. And then there were none. That is my all time favorite. Is it? Um, yes. I, I've read, I don't know how many times I've read that book. Have it, Do you like any of her others? That's the only one I've read from her. They were okay, but this one is just, I don't know. I love this book and I read it a long time ago, of course, but I got this one. I was in Chicago for something and it was just there and I don't, I didn't own it. And I was like, I have to have this book. So you know what? Now I think I'm going to read that next. Now that you know, brought that up because I haven't read it in so long that sometimes I don't remember everything. And it was just so good. Yeah. It's a great book. That And see, that was one, again, I can never guess who done it. And that was one. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know where we're going here, but I mean, it's a fun ride. And I guess... <laughs> It'll be revealed in the end. And I know that that is a big one that a lot of people have remade, you know, they, they use this like remake or re- reimagine. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I've read any reimaginings from black authors. Have you read any just in general that have been worth a try? I have not. Okay. Just curious. You know, knowing that thriller is your, your top, is there anything that you've read that's like totally shocked and surprised you that's been like maybe an outlier, like like a romance or I don't know if you read, do you read any horrors or mysteries? I don't read any horrors yet. I think I want to get into that, you know, because I'm a true crime girly. So mm. I think I really need to get into that. Yes. And that, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a huge one because uh, Lessons in Chemistry, I would have never picked that up. I would have never picked it up. And um, I remember book club, we have a book club at work and someone said we should be reading this for book club. And I'm like, historical fiction, which use that term lightly. I guess people kind of don't feel like it was historical fiction, but I I listened to it. I did not read it. I listened mm-hmm. to it because I felt like I started reading and I'm like, this, I'm not going to finish this. Yeah. I'm not. So listening to it and I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people didn't, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I felt like, you know, I'm listening to a woman that knows what she wants and regardless of what's going on, she's going to do it her way. And it was inspiring. I know a lot of people go back and forth. She couldn't have done this as a scientist and blah, blah. I don't care. I don't care. The story was good. And then to see the series that they had was even better. So I felt like that was a book right there that truly surprised me because there's no way that I would have picked that up. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think it came up on Libby and I was like, oh, it's available instant download. Sure. And yeah, I was, I was really surprised by how much I like it. I still haven't watched the series yet. And I agree listening to it, especially like when she started using like a lot of scientific words, I was like, oh yes. no, I would have been out if I would have read this. I, physically. I don't know what this is. 
<laughs> silent it out, not doing that. <laughs> It would not have translated the same. So yeah, I agree. That one was that one was was definitely really good. And and you know, I don't know. I would think of it as a historical slash woman's fiction. I mean, it. But what I and it was right the fifties, sixties. Um, yeah. I I don't know, and I again I don't know. This is just me speculating and thinking. Like if historical fiction has to be set off of a no it doesn't have to be set off of a real event um no. at least i wouldn't think so i'm I'm thinking about house of eve by sadiqa johnson mm, and that yeah. one was set in 60s maybe 50s 60s and i i refer to that as historical fiction and it's not mm-hmm. necessarily centered around a factual event that happened in history, but just things right. that happened during that time period. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know people were were trying to say um, <laughs> that it that it wasn't. It what are, not, they was like, this is not historical fiction. I'm like, then what is it? What's uh um before we get into the last round, I have just um two questions for you. What is a book that you predicted was going to be a hit for you? Just because knowing your reading taste and you're like, oh, this is this is really going to work. And it did. Uh, They're Vicious Games by Joel Wellington. Oh, my God. You don't understand. Like, I had it on my wish list. And I was like, somebody's going to get me this book. And I just knew it. And I just knew it. And I was like, I would go to Target and they would have two, you know, buy two, get one free. And I'm like, I'm going to wait because somebody is going to get it for me. To the point I was like, you know what? I'm not waiting no longer. <laughs> Got that book. And I was amazed by how just beautiful it was written. That was a book that told a story that I feel like, and I've mentioned this before in one of my reviews, that this could honestly be happening yeah. in places, you know? And it's scary to think that, but we know how the elite work. And it was just like this book, oh, I was like, I, 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 I bought it myself. I couldn't wait any longer. And, you know, it was amazing. Like that, that is another book that I will reread because it was so amazing. Yes. Yes. I agree. I read that in December and I was very like, my sister was like, oh, you'll love it. She read it before I did. We were supposed to buddy read it, but she was tired of waiting on me. And she was like, oh, you'll (laughs) love it. And I was like, okay, we'll see. You know, again, like it had been a really great year for YA thriller Mm -hmm. horror books so I was like all right I'll I'll definitely make time over the holiday to read it and I read it and I was just like I think I was on the other end because I was like this could not happen in real life where are these people's (laughs) parents nobody's parents would allow this is not and my sister's like ma'am it probably really could yes (laughs) yes you know those elite people you know those secret societies this could really I feel like this is probably happening somewhere yeah 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 yeah, it's scary to think. Um, but it was so good. It was so it good. Was. It was so realistic. Oh, I I loved the way that it went with the ending. Yes. You know, no spoilers, guys. But I was hoping that I don't know. I was hoping that it wasn't going to just have this unrealistic feel, and yes. everyone was going to right off into the sunset yeah. everything was going to be oh, like okay because you know that wouldn't have felt realistic for what was right. happening in the book right but i i definitely when i got to the end i was like and that is a good ending yes that it was real great way yes that is a great yes. way to end this <laughs> so do you have any specific tips for someone who is trying to I guess figure out their reading taste, what what's going to work for them? How do they how do they get to this point where they are picking up more books that they know are going to be hits for them? So, the first thing I would say is go to the library. That's number 1. Let's not waste money on books that you may not like. So mm-hmm. that's number 1. Look look to people's bookstagrams or goodreads or things like that to see what other people are reading and look at like the synopsis and see if it's something that I may want to give that a try. I may want to read that. Just, you know, there are some people that are just romance, all romance. Sometimes you need to step outside of your romance bubble and see what else is out there because you may find some amazing books. But yes, the library is number one. You know, do your research online to see maybe 
read about the book. Don't just pick up a book because so-and-so said it was a hit. Don't just pick up a book because the cover is gorgeous. I have done that. Don't pick up a book just because. Read what the book is about. See if that's something that fits with you. See if that's something that's exciting to you or something that you may enjoy and get that book. Get it from the library. That way, if you don't enjoy it, you don't have buyer's remorse. Right. I like that. Yes. Um, and, the you know, the reading, doing a little bit more digging on what the mm -hmm. book is about um, yes. and, you know, what is happening the style all of that i heard someone um that i follow on youtube she was saying that she know she's realized that books that don't have a lot of dialogue don't work for mm -hmm. her and so something that i think is really great is 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 listening to other people when they're saying what did or didn't work for them because then yeah. you start to think like huh do I like that? Do I not like that? And so when she said that, I was like, wow, that is an interesting, like I've never heard anyone say like they have a hard time reading books that don't have a lot of dialogue. And so when she's mm -hmm. in the bookstore, she literally not reading it, but it's kind of flipping through the pages to see, am I getting a whole page of descriptive text for 15 pages? Cause if so, this might not work for me. And I thought that was, I thought that was really interesting. And honestly, it, it's that way with NK Jemison's book. But now that I'm listening to it, mm. it's so much, but she's, she's descriptive and, you know, we're hearing what these characters are thinking and witnessing and seeing, but, but there isn't a ton of dialogue, at least within the first 150 pages that I've read. Um, there isn't a ton of dialogue happening. So I think that that is something you know, kind of listening to what other readers are saying that they like and don't like will kind of help you identify like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't like that in that mm -hmm. book. And then what about branching out, trying something new? How, what any, yeah, I'm, would it be the same, you know, kind of reading or doing deep dives, listening to other reviews? Like if someone's like, you know, I'm, I want to try a fantasy this year or, mm -hmm. you know, dark romance. I've never heard of that, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So speaking of that, I did that. I was just like, you know what? Let me give something else a chance. I just jumped into it. And I was like, let me just give something else a chance. Now, while that one didn't work out for me and it kind of turned me off on the whole genre, that's okay. I tell people like, if you want to just try something, because a friend of mine asked me, how do you know what you like? How do you know what to try? And it's like, you just try it. Just hop in. Say you don't read women's fiction. Grab a women's fiction book and, and read the back of the book. See if you may enjoy it and just try it. Also, you know, we, we're all on Bookstagram or Book Talk or whatever. If you may feel like you may be interested in a sci-fi book, see what the top ones are. Maybe you can get into the synopsis of those and see that maybe, hey, this may be something I may enjoy. So just jumping into it is a big thing, but also maybe doing a little bit of research on some of the most liked or popular books for that specific genre may help too. I agree. And I think, um, I can't speak for all bookstagrammers or content creators, mm -hmm. but I think asking, like if you've seen someone post about a book where you're like, hmm, that sounds kind of interesting. I think mm -hmm. asking that creator, like, you know, I, I've never read anything like this can I DM you and ask you some questions about it? I'm trying to figure out if this would be, you know, a good fit for me or just asking more yeah. questions in their comments. And I know don't get offended if they don't respond, especially if the post is a little older, because sometimes it, it mm -hmm. takes time to respond to stuff. And, and if they don't respond, it doesn't mean that they didn't want to talk. Maybe they just didn't see it. But I think that that, that is because that's, for the, most of us, that's why we're here is to talk about yes. books, is to give suggestions, is to help you find a book that you love. So I, I think, you know, asking one of the creators that you follow, especially if you seem to have a lot of similar tastes um, mm -hmm. in a specific genre, then asking them about something else that they've read to see if that might work for you. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. Like to me, I'm going to respond to whatever anybody asks me because that's what we are there for. We're there to talk books. So any questions, I welcome them. Okay, well, we are coming up on time. My last couple of notes here. Do you have a few book recommendations that you would love to just give people, um, whether they're trying something new or something that's been a hit for you that you think, um, you know, people should should 
go to their library and check out? Yes. Um, well, one will be out in a couple weeks by one of my favorite authors, Kennedy Ryan. Um, this could be us. Amazing. Loved it. Everyone needs to read it. And if you have not read Before I Let Go, you need to read that one first. Um, also, Yours Truly, of course, by Abby Jimenez. I fell in love with her from that book. And then, of course, we just talked about it, and I didn't mean to bring it up prior, but They're Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington. Those are three books that I encourage everyone to read. Yes. I co-sign on the two. So I have both of Abby Jimenez's books behind me here. I haven't read them yet. Um, oh, my God. I haven't read them yet, but that she is on my list. And hopefully next month I can at least get to, so you would suggest starting with part of your world before your Start story. with part of your world. Okay. Yes. Cause someone's story from part of your world who I'm obsessed with, her name is Brie Ortiz and she is the funniest person I feel like I've ever met and I don't even know her. Um, she, her story is yours truly. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. I will circle back to you. Once I read that, I'll come back and let you know like how I felt about that book. Okay. okay. And then, so this last round is called, there's a book for that. Um, and I'm okay. just going to fire off some questions to you and you answer with the first thing that comes to mind. All right. All right. So a nonfiction that you love. Uh, year of yes by Shonda Rhimes. I read it every year. I forget about <laughs> that was a good book. <laughs> Agreed. A popular book that did not work for you. We're going to go back to Colleen Hoover and it was Never Never. Ooh, okay. Is that the blue one? It's like black, purplish. Oh, okay. And she wrote it with Taryn Fisher as well. It was just... And then I'll say on, a, on another level, Night Crawling by Leela Motley. I could not finish it. Oh, that's the orange cover with the girl with the braids. Yeah. It's like the um, Oakland... Mm-hmm. Something, something it's Oakland. Yeah, she's from Oakland and um she's they're night crawling, like that's what they do, and it's just did not work. It didn't work for you. Got it, got okay. it, got it. One of your favorite audio listens. Uh, since I am a crime junkie, it will be All People Here by Ashley Flowers. Ooh, okay. I haven't heard of that one. A classic book that you loved. So I'm gonna sound like a child here. But Charlotte's Web by E.B. White is one of my most favoritest books, plus Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, I don't think I've ever read Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, oh. The last book that you purchased? Um, I purchased it. This is, I was going to an Arthur event and I got sick. See, this is my year of sickness <laughs> and I couldn't make it. But I was going to go meet Zio Axelrod. So the last book purchase was Girls with Bad Reputations by her. Ooh, okay. All right. The last book that you added to your TBR. Um, Nikki Chronicles by Sherela. Sherela is a friend of mine. So she's a local author to Kansas City. Okay. And it is an erotic novel. And I have not started it. I've never read an erotic novel, but I'm excited to read it. Okay. Oh, my gosh. You're dropping so many books I've never <laughs> heard of. And, guys, just a reminder, everything that we mentioned here is going to be linked in the show notes so that you can easily find it. Um, okay, next, a book that you read in less than 48 hours. So we talked about yours truly already, but there is another one that it was very short, like it's 62 pages. So I don't, I mean, hours isn't even the amount that I've read it, but it was Dear Vicky by Octavia Grant. Hmm. It was mind blowing. In 62 pages. Yes. Really? Yes. You must read it. Ah, Okay. I'm going to have to look that up. That's not, I mean, like, that's something I could finish in a night, in a sitting. Yes. Yes, you can. I get you won't so nervous down. with novellas because I'm like, I don't know if you can convince me of anything in these short amount of pages. Yes. In okay. this one, yes. 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 Okay. I'm going to do it and I'll let you know. And the last one is a book that brung you or gave you joy. My all-time favorite book. Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. Yes. Oh, <laughs> perfection. Oh, that's yes. such a great note to end on. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to tell the listeners if you want to remind them where they can find you um, on social media? Sure. I am on Instagram under Lit and Listen. So that's L-I-T-N-L-I-S-T-E-N. 
same name on TikTok as well. I haven't really got much up on there yet, but I plan on, that was a goal for this year to start doing my reviews there. But yeah, that's where you can find me. Ask me any questions, book related, life related. I'm here. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. I loved having you on. Love finally like getting to see your face and sit down <laughs> and talk to you. Thanks. Maybe in the future, we can bring you back and talk about, especially some of these these romance books and um, some of the books that you suggested, we could talk about my thoughts on them and, you know, continue the conversation. Good. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. All right, guys, until next time, we will talk to you later. Bye. Hey, book lovers, one last thing before you leave. Are you currently looking for a group to read and chat about books with? If so, I'd love to invite you to join us on our current buddy read of Anna Maria and the Fox by Lena De La Rosa. We'll be having a virtual meetup to discuss this book on Sunday, May 19th. All of the details, including the link to join the discussion and our monthly book thread can be found over on the Geneva app, which you can access by clicking the link in the show notes. Quick reminder that all books mentioned in this episode can also be found in the show notes. Thanks so much for joining us and wishing you a wonderful reading adventure until we meet again. Chat soon.